All right. So, number three. Why may a rise in employment decrease labor productivity? Okay. Well, labor productivity is, deper is, is uh, determined by uh, the, the training of the workers. So the average skill of the workers, uh, if, if the skilled workers are decreased, the answer here is A. Average skill level of workers is decreased, and the average amount of capital uh, equipment used by workers also decreases. Because this is, you increase the number of employed, but if they are not skilled, they, they won't produce, they won't be productive. And because they're not skilled, they're not able to use capital goods uh, effect, effectively. So that's why A, decrease and decrease. Okay, labor productivity is in a country's uh, sugar industry uh, grows more rapidly than a country's output of sugar. What must this mean? Okay, let's look at this table, table one. We see Australia, we see New Zealand, and we see the UK. All right, so pay attention to this for your formative exam. Uh, now, food and non-beverages, these are the weights between these two countries. So question number one. I want to focus on this one, 1C. What can be concluded from, can, can it be concluded from table one that people in Australia spend more on alcoholic beverages than people in the UK? Explain your answer. Well, this weights things only tells what percentage of their income that they spend on these types of goods and services. It can't compare between countries because a UK is smaller than Australia. So Australia may have 40 million people and the UK may have just 1 million people. So, you know, you, you get the point. It doesn't t tell us about what they spend per goods and service. It just tells us the percentage of that income, rather, no matter how small or big, uh, of that country for that particular good or service. So that's the answer to that. Uh, the next one, I want to focus here on D. Explain how consumer price indices may influence monetary policy. Well, if consumer price indices are constantly increasing, monetary policy banks uh, may look at CPI to see if they well, how the inflation is is. Uh, in their economy. So if the CPI, the inflation, comparing the CPI base year to an additional year, uh, if the inflation rate is high, say at 70 percent, what a central bank will do will raise interest rates uh, at the bank. So what that means when you raise interest rates, that means if I save a hundred dollars and the interest rate increases from two to five percent, I get extra money if I do not consume, if I do not spend my money, I have incentive to put my money in the bank, you see? So if the interest rates at the bank go from 2% to 20%, I will stop buying McDonald's and Burger King and, and shoes and soda and all these different things, and I will put my money in the bank where it will grow. And that's how the, the, the central bank will will control uh, interest rates. Uh, control the CPI and the inflation and the demand pull inflation by encouraging people to put money in the banks instead of spending money in the economy. So also when the level of CPI the inflation is too low, when it's too low, what the bank will do, it will it will lower interest rates and encourage people to spend money in the economy. So in short, when the inflation rate is too high, the central bank can raise interest rates so people will get more for their money if they put it in the bank. If the CPI, the inflation is too low, the bank can lower interest rates and encourage people to take money out of the bank and buy into the economy. Okay. Uh, this next question. Discuss whether consumer price indices provide an accurate measure of inflation. Well, this the answer to this is maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, again, uh, CPI and uh, price indices are about choosing 600 goods and services to see how the price changes over between two years. Now, we may have difficulties collecting information. We may be having difficulties. So again, this is a maybe, maybe not. Discuss where the consumer price indices provide an accurate measure of inflation. Uh, it's about collecting information on 600 goods or services. And maybe we collect all information. Maybe the people tell us the right information. Uh, maybe people buy those specific goods or services. We're not exactly sure. So the computer price indices is a measure, but it may or may not be completely accurate. It's just a tool. It's just something to measure the inflation over a, a period of time. 2A. 
Why are weights used in constructing CPI? Well, weights are used in constructing CPI because the change in the price of items which people spend a higher proportion of their total expenditure on is more significant in influencing the cost of living than items on which they do not spend much on. So we want to see where people spend money and uh, what percentage of their money they spend in the economy. So we could tell, uh, for example, if the CPI for alcohol is 10% in year one and the CPI is 1% in year two, we could see that policy or maybe prices about alcohol is changing and allows us to uh, see uh, how people change their, their percentage of their wealth on a particular goods and services. So there are two reasons really now. We want to see uh, we want to see w how much of their total uh, expenditure, the proportion, that, which is significantly influencing the cost of living, and we also want to see uh, where and how people are spending money within the economy. Okay, number two, explain possible reasons why the weights for alcohol and tobacco transportation changed um, between 1992 and 2008. So we look at this table here. We see alcohol. It went from 2.1 to 1.2 and the reason being again it could be because of policy or it could be um, just people preferences it could be advertising anything that would discourage people from spending money on alcohol between these two years okay and the answer key says this would have, would have would been because people were spending a smaller proportion of their total expenditure on those items over the period people may have become more health conscious or higher taxes may have discouraged consumption in contrast the weight for transportation doubled indicating that transport accounted for 14.8 percent of the total expenditure in 2008 but only 7.4 percent in 2008 uh, people People may have been traveling more because of rising income, or they may be spending more due to rising price of transportation. So again, you look at the two weights. You see that the weights are decreasing between two years or increasing between two years, and you can think of policy that will make people spend a greater percentage of their um, income on that type of good or service. Okay, the next one. What is meant by inflation? Inflation means that, you know, for at each price level, it takes more dollars to buy that level of good services. It just makes things more expensive. And I'm looking, and the, I'm looking through the book, and it says, inflation is a sustained rise in the general price level. So, inflation means, uh... At this year, I, the, my holiday costs 100 tinge for one bottle. Now it's 300 tinge for one bottle. It costs more money to buy the same uh, good and service. That's what it's meant by inflation. Okay, moving on. On. Uh, okay, so in this diagram, you can say it says use 9.13, this diagram here, and compare Paraguay's inflation between 1950 and 2005 with that of Venezuela. So if you look here between uh, 1950 and say 1987, uh, Venezuela, which one is that? Paraguay's inflation rate was significantly higher. And then after that year, then it was Venezuela. So we're just looking at the, the graph here, making conclusions. Next question. To what extent did Paraguay receive a low stable rate of inflation between 1950 and 2005? Well, that was just, again, between 1950 and 2008, you can see the lower uh, uh, inflation rate, and then it spiked, and then it went back down again. Just looking at the picture. Discuss whether all countries should set annual inflation rate around to 3%. Okay, for this answer, I'll just read the answer key. The answer key says, there are a number of advantages in setting inflation targets. An inflation target may convince people that the central bank will keep inflation low. Firms may moderate prices, workers may ask for lower wage rates, and consumers may not rush large item purchases. An inflation target also makes the central bank accountable. It would have to explain if it failed to achieve the target. 3% is a low rate of inflation, and one which most governments would find acceptable. Low inflation has a number of benefits, including maintaining international price competitiveness, encouraging investment, avoiding a random redistribution of income, and menu and shoe leather costs. For some governments, however, 3% may be too ambitious a target in the short term. If a country has experienced a very high rate of inflation for some time, an inflation rate, for example, of 7 might be more achievable. There is also a risk that setting an inflation target may make a bank concrete concentrate on controlling inflation at the expense of reducing economic growth and increasing unemployment. 
for instance, a central bank's decision to raise the rate of interest would, when the inflation rate is 5% may lead to an increase in unemployment, which may create greater problems for the economy than the 5% inflation. In addition, to be effective, people would have to possess confidence in the central bank. So again, with targets, it basically it makes the bank more uh, more accountable for its actions, and it sets a goal that the central bank will have to explain the inflation rate. So uh, also, it makes it makes the goods and services more stable as far as prices. So my my uh, holiday will not be will be right around instead of hundred. It's a hundred right now for my holiday, but it may be a hundred and one tinge. But it will never grow to three hundred tinge. So you can see how uh, keeping a stabilized inflation rate is beneficial.